Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Got a good one for you today. You see a lot of cool attachments behind me. Kind of gives you an idea what these might be for an ATV or UTV. Got Bob Nelson here with Metsa Machines. He's going to be the U.S. importer and distributor of Rami attachments. So I'm going to let Bob lead the charge here. We're going to go through this and show you what these things are all about. Now these all mount on the front of your quad, okay? So not on the back, so you don't, they're not pull type. Yeah, exactly. These are all going on the front. They're all going to mount with a similar system, yep. right? Yep. So yeah, it's the same subframe. We'll take you through all of that. Let's get started. We'll start down on this side here. All right. Sounds good. All right. Now I do kind of want to sort of think if I know a little bit of what I'm talking about. Okay. So we've got the finish mower here. Brush cutter. Oh, that's the brush cutter? Yeah. Oh, that is, sorry. We've got the brush cutter here and the finish mower here. Yep. Exactly. Long mower. Okay. Yep. Now these are sort of like a, a very similar unit where yeah. you could convert one to the other. Exactly. And so potentially get two machines in one sort of. Yeah. 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 So, so the brush cutter can get turned into the lawnmower and the lawnmower can get turned into the brush cutter. Um, typically what people are doing is they'll buy one or the other depending on what the need is at the time. Okay. Uh, most of the time they're buying the brush cutter first okay. and they're, they're knocking down a bunch of stuff and they're getting some trail maintenance done and maybe clearing a field. And then after they've got that done, then they might want to say, all right, well, we've got that area cleaned. Now we want to maintain it. We want to have nice grass there. So then they'll buy the lawnmower conversion kit, which is just the front plate, uh, the blade hubs, and caster wheels. So other than that, they're the same frame, they're the same engine, and all of the Rammies use the same subframe or what you would call push tubes on like a snowplow setup for an ATV typically. You'll see on the brush cutter has this push down bar here. So when you come up to the small trees and things like that, you'll be pushing on the tree. This will open up as you lean there huh. and then it'll cut and knock it forward. Oh, is this spring? This is here? locked in place right now oh, for shipping. In place now. Yep. Okay. Okay. But, but yeah, that oh, will yeah, spring right up and allow the blades to make contact with the tree that you're hitting nice. and tip it over. Very cool. Okay, so is it, there's just one engine option then? No, there's two. Okay. So the standard engine is the Briggs 21R, okay. which is um, it's a single cylinder engine with pressure lubrication. So it's got an oil filter on it. Uh, it's still, it's a nice engine, but then there also is a Honda option available as well. This has one more horsepower, runs a little quieter, okay. and it's got the Honda name. So a lot of people really like, if, yeah. if they really like the Honda stuff, yeah. they like to have this Honda on here. Okay. Uh, the Briggs has, set throttle so the Briggs is running full throttle all the time hmm. where the Honda has a separate throttle control so that's kind of nice too if if, yeah. if you want it yeah very nice okay now something I think is really cool but I don't know if it's optional or standard but they can side shift right yeah so these both come with side shift as standard equipment now and basically how it works is when you do your initial mounting you'll determine if you want it to be able to go center and right or center and left huh. you can't pivot it like on the fly from center to left and right. Okay. Um, we can show that later how that works, but okay. basically there's some sliding rods that go in place and that allows you to either, like most of the time people are letting it shift off to the left. That's what the flail mower does too. Okay. But the cool part about that is, is if you're mowing on a, a you know, a, a, one of your trails or something like that and the and the road kind of falls off like that, yeah. you can still have the mower hang off a little bit and get that, yeah. get that side piece there oh, without yeah. Um, without having to tip over your ATV. Yeah, so. either keep things cut back a little bit more yeah. or, you know, just kind of underneath a, a brush on a fence line or whatever the heck you want to do. Yeah, right? exactly. Yep. That's really nice. So the Rami, the, the Rami series, all of them are 120. So we'll, sometimes we'll have a customer inquire and say, I'm interested in a Rami 120. Well, they're all uh, brush cutter 120, lawnmower 120, snowblower 120, flail mower 120. The 120 means is 120 centimeters, which comes out to be just under 48 inches. So they're all just about four feet wide. With the exception of the snowblower, the snowblower always starts as a 120 or 48 inch wide, and then you can add wings to it. So you can add, they call 140 wings that make it 55 inch or 155 wings that make it 61 inch. Okay. So that's what the 120 means. Okay. And to me, I, I think one of the absolute coolest things, and I wish you could do this in the tractor world, I wish you could take your brush hog and convert it into a finish mower, but you can do that with these. So you can have two tools and one for just a nominal upcharge, you know, just one engine to maintain then. Um, a really, really cool concept. Yeah, and you don't have to do it all at once either. So if you, you decide to, some people buy the brush cutter and the lawnmower conversion kit at the same time, but some of them will buy the brush cutter and a year later say, ah, now I want the, yeah. the lawnmower conversion yeah. kit and, and we can ship it out, so. Super cool, let's, let's keep on looking on. Yeah. All right, so Bob, what are we looking at here? This is the Rami Flail Mower 120. Okay. Yep. This was one of the first pieces that we brought in from Rami back in 2016. We brought in the Rami Flail Mower and the Snowblower. At the time, they didn't have these other ones in production yet. Okay. Um, I actually did see the prototype of the brush cutter way back then, yeah. which was really cool, but I couldn't say anything about it. So <laughs> now I can say whatever I want. But the Rami Flail Mower has been very popular. It's got a drum in it with rotating flail blades. There's 22 pair of, of curved 
of curved blades underneath it that form a Y, so they call them okay. the Y blades. Yep, yep. Um, it's designed for rough cut. You can cut up to three quarter inch diameter stuff with it. Okay. And we've done bigger too, and if you hit the bigger stuff, most of the time it'll just kinda, if it's, if it's too big for it, it'll tip it over and you can just go back over okay. one more time. Yep, yep. Oh, I, that's a good question though. What, is it three quarter inch on the brush yeah, so cutter Yeah, the, so the brush cutter you can do up to four inch diameter with. Four inch? Yeah, wow. now, you know, you can't do four, four trees that are four inch at one time, yeah, but yeah. you can do one that's four inch diameter. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, there's a video that, um, I think it's MKM Agriculture in the UK did that, that they show wow. knocking over a big old tree. Wow. Yeah, yeah. it's cool stuff. That's nuts. <laughs> okay, sorry to interrupt. No problem at all. So this has got, um, like I said, the flail blades in it and an optional side shift. Most of the time, th this, this comes as just a straight unit straight in front of your ATV. You can get the side shift kit that allows you to shift it to the left only. This one, you can't huh. go left and right because you've got the engine off center. So they'll allow it oh, to go okay. over that way. Okay. If you wanted to go way to, over to the right, then you'd have a lot of excess weight yeah, there. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, this has got caster wheels in the front and the caster wheels are really only supposed to act as like an anti-scalp. That's oh, not okay. how you adjust the height. Okay. The height adjustment is actually on the side of this thing. And I should mention too, the other, the other mowers and uh, brush cutter that we're looking at have a solid rear roller in the back. So when you're mowing, when you're using the implement, the weight of the implement is on the ground. Okay. You can still float it. Like if you're going through a marshy or swampy area, you can pick it up a little bit. Okay. And then, you know, kind of go through that area and yeah. then lower it back down. That yeah. way all the, all the stress isn't on the front of your ATV. But this one does or doesn't have a rear roller? This one does have a solid rear oh, okay. roller in the so, back. So too. all three yep. of them do. All have three that. of them do. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Exactly. Wow. So it rides on that. And this one actually has little adjustable skid shoes that adjust with the solid rear roller. Okay. So, well, so. You know, last 12 months or whatever it is, what's the most popular? What are, what are customers generally going with? Uh, it's been changing. So the flail mower was most popular. Now I would say it's between the snowblower and the brush cutter. Uh, hmm. We're going into snow season. This year, snowblowers have been a lot more popular. This time of year, I think people are just trying to get more prepared. Sure. Um, but the flail mower has always been our most popular because it's been around longer too. Okay. Um, yep. The brush cutter has only been out for a couple of years now and um, it's really now it's really gaining more popularity. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, yeah. Now I see this one's got the Briggs on it. Yep. Yep. This is a standard engine on the flail mower and this is the only engine available on the flail mower. Okay. Only yep. engine available yep. on here. Now, exactly. is this the, the, uh, the other engine no. option? No. So this is a horizontal shaft engine because it's running the belts. You've got the big drum underneath of it. Okay. And these are vertical shafts. So they're, they're running the three, these have three blade hubs in them. Yep. And they're running on a horizontal plane where this is a vertical. This one shaft, okay. Yep. Okay, very good. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Okay, now last but not least, we have the snowblower. Yeah. So. The Snowblower 120 starts out as a 306 cc Briggs and 48 inches wide. You've yeah. got the pro version here. Yep. So this has got the 420 cc engine on it. And then we've added the wings as well. Okay. And these I believe are the 155 wings. So this should be 61 inches wide with the wings. Nice. Um, we always recommend if you're gonna get any of the wings to get the bigger engine. And we've got customers that'll still buy the bigger engine with, the, with um, just using a 48 inch. If they're up in like Montana, Colorado, you know, somewhere where they're getting a ton of snow, yeah. they're usually opting for the bigger engine. Okay. I will say that the 306cc still performs very well in the standard configuration. Okay. Um, but if you're going on a UTV or using the wings, that pro engine is the way to go. Do you sell more of the base configuration or more of the wider and upgraded configuration? It is now, it's been more of the 420cc engine. Okay. Yeah. Probably at this point, like 10 to one. Would you recommend been, going with that just so you have the ability to you know, add on wings and go bigger later? You know, the thing is like, the saying is to, it's better to, to have and not need it yeah. than, to, than to need it and not have it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think that's the mentality that a lot of people are, are, are going with. Yeah. Um, you know, if I was just gonna be putting it on a smaller, like if I was gonna put it on that ATV, mm -hmm. I would be just fine using the 306cc. Okay. You know, but if okay. you're putting it on the Ranger and you're, you know, gonna put wings on it, yep. get the bigger engine. Okay. Uh -huh. um, one of the cool things that these snowblowers all have now, they all have electric control for the chute. So we can- That's nice. But we can move the chute left and right, and we can move the chute up and down, and we can we just have a kill switch for the engine. That's so cool. You can't start the engine from here. Uh, you'll flip this switch on, and then 
you can pull start the engine or these are these are the regular snow engines that you'd find on on any like walk behind snowblower with a big engine on it hmm. so it's it has a uh, plug-in for an extension cord oh, and okay. a push button to oh, get her started sweet. Heck yeah. All right, so there are actually a decent amount of features on this, and, and I, can you just take us through it really quick? Yeah, absolutely. So like I was saying, we've got the, we've got the electric control of the, of the chute rotation and deflector tip. One of the really nice things about this is that this is powered by the snowblower. So you don't have to have any extra wires plugged into your UTV or your ATV. Yeah, that's cool. You just have to have this controller in your ATV or UTV. Um, so that's a really yeah, nice thing. It's got up, down, left, yeah, right. So we got so we got right, left for this chute, and we got up and down for the deflector here. Okay. And um, a couple other things cool I want to show you here too is if you do get it if you do get it plugged up or anything like that, uh, obviously shut it off first. Yeah. But you can actually open the chute, and you got a clear path to clear it. And of course, it comes with a clearing stick <laughs> on the back side here, so we can use the clearing stick, knock down whatever's there, put the clearing stick back, restart it, re-engage the clutch. That's awesome. And back to work we go. Um, if you look at how this is built too, it's all pretty robust steel. It's not. If you've looked at other other aftermarket snowblowers on the market, they're I, I don't want to call them out as being flimsy, but they're they're not nearly as robust as this is. Yeah. Um, being the fact that it comes from northern part of Finland, they get lots of snow. They've done a lot of engineering work on these things to make sure that they work. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and you have adjustments. Yeah, we've got we've got Down adjustable here. skid shoes here. Yeah. So for our height. You know, that way if you have, you know, if you don't have concrete or asphalt, if you have gravel. Exactly. Right? Yep. And we have, now we have a solid plastic option that we developed here in the United States. So if people have pavers yep. or, um, you know, stamped concrete and they don't want those things grinded into it, yeah. you can use the solid plastic Sweet. ones. And, and they actually wear really well too. Okay. So as far as options on there, I mean, single stage, dual stage, anything like that available? Yeah. So this is strictly a single stage snowblower and there's a few reasons for it. One of the reasons is being a front mount, you want to be able to have this as tight to the front of your ATV as you can. Okay. And you want to be able to pivot it up and, and lift it and get it out of the way. If you've looked at okay. competitive models that are two stage, they end up being a lot deeper. Hmm. The engines are usually further back. There's chains, there's stuff that goes to the back of the ATV and the UTV. Not the case on these. They, they use a standard snowplow mount bracket, two pins, hook up the winch, and you're ready to go. So that's one of the nice things about all the Rammies is they're, they're very easy. Once you do the initial setup, they're very easy to take off and put back on. So okay. if you want to use the UTV for something else in winter, this is go take the snowblower off, you know, five minutes later, go do something else. Yeah. On the side of it being two stage versus single stage also, if you look at the single stage auger design, they've got it so there is a, I think I can turn this a little bit. So they've got this, they call their MDS system. It's hmm. basically rubber flap. And this acts as a squeegee uh, to, to kind of squeegee the snow up through the chute. Oh, okay. But also it acts as a bypass. So this doesn't have any shear pins. So there's no oh, shear pins wow. on here. So wow. th there's, if, if a rock, if there's an issue with a rock or something like that, this will allow it to bypass. You'll either shoot it up there or like we've sucked up pieces of firewood. Okay. And you, you just, <laughs> basically the engine will stall. So okay. disengage right. the clutch, back up, pick it up with your winch, figure out what's going on. Oh, he got a piece of firewood in, chuck it out huh. and then restart everything. One of the other things to note is the pillow block bearings. These are greasable pillow block bearings on both ends of the auger. Nice. And oh, yeah. they're big, as you can see. Yeah. Um, again, with some snowboards, wow. you'll see like plastic bushings or bronze bushings and yeah. you know, the, the stuff that wears out over time. That's not the case on here. These are your wear parts, but this is about yep. your only wear part okay. along with skid shoes and your scraper bar. So one of the things I'll note too is that it's really easy to start this thing even in winter. Um, you know, I'll move the throttle midway, turn the choke on, give it a prime and I'll pull it. And what they did with the pull rope, so you don't have to stand in front of the machine oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is you've got the pull rope coming out to the side. That's why they did that. So I what I always tell people is to, to pull the slack out of here first yep. and then give it a pull. Okay. Okay. And then you'll get her going. Huh. Um, that way you're not, you know, you can feel that where the dogs are hitting first. Yeah. I was just, you know, engage it first and yep. then give it a pull. Yep. But this is nice because you don't have to stand in front of the auger yep. and, uh, that's a nice yeah, touch. Nice safety feature. That's a nice touch. Okay, so as far as all the other attachments, do they require a controller like this at all? Yeah, so they're all different. The the snowblower uses that one with the three switches on it. Okay. The flail mower uses just an on-off switch and the throttle is on the engine itself. Oh. And then same thing for the brush cutter and the lawnmower, if it's got a Briggs on it, it yeah. just has an on-off switch. Okay. Uh, basically, they, they use that as sort of an emergency stop. So that'll be in your cab or on your handlebars and you can just hit it if something happens where you gotta shut the engine off. Okay. On the Honda versions, you get a throttle control as well as the on-off switch. Oh, so right. that's okay. a little bit different. Okay. They all use the same mounting plate to put on the ATV, and then uh, you can you can mount them however you want. Oh, huh. very nice. Okay, so we've got two things going on here, right? One yeah. of these is yep. 
something that comes with the Rami. Exactly. One is not, but is Correct. required. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Take us through it. So this is what in traditional sense you'd call push tubes on a snowplow setup for an ATV. Okay. Yep. This is the ATV, this is the Rami subframe. And this is the two pipe subframe. So this is what you would typically put on an ATV with a center mount bracket or a UTV that had a center mount bracket. Okay. And this is a center mount bracket. But what mm. we've seen is that some customers already have a snowplow setup either from Morn, KFI, whomever it may be. Yep. If they've already got that center mount bracket on their ATV that has two pinholes, the Rami subframe adapts to it. So oh, okay. you don't need to get a specific thing for the Rami. That's nice. You can use any universal plow mount bracket, wow. Wow. which is nice because sometimes a customer wants to go back and forth from a snowblower to a snowplow. Okay. Or they've got a snowplow and they want to flail more, they can still yep. just keep that same mount bracket on the ATV year round. Okay, so this is the one pipe subframe, they call it, uh, for use with UTVs because Typically the UTVs have a front mount bracket on them. So you can see how short this is. Um, when the Rammies were first, first manufactured, they only had the two pipe subframe, which is push tubes basically like a snowplow would have on an ATV. And they were about here. So to put them on a UTV with front mount bracket, we had to cut them, shorten them. So Rammy came up with this solution and, and, and this has worked very well. Um, here you can see they shim up this side of it. And that's just so that when you pick it up with the winch, it, it doesn't, it's not running at a weird angle. Because there's more weight on Because there's more weight on the engine okay. side, yep. And this one pipe frame is only available for use with the snow blowers. Um, the two pipe frames still need to be used for the lawn mowers, brush cutters, and the flail mowers. But here I'll show you, this one has also got the optional lock hook set on it, which is these fingers. And so if we take these pins out, we can move these fingers down. And what those do is if your ATV or UTV has posts on it, some of them have posts right in the frame or bosses right in the frame. Yeah. Um, you know, basically that boss would go here, this would clamp over the top of it, and then you'd put your pin back in place. And there's two positions, so you've got 16 millimeter or 19 millimeter. Okay. And if uh, you can use these lock hook sets on either the one pipe frame or the two pipe frame. So this ear setup is the same on the two pipe frame. It's just on the two pipe frame, they don't use these shims. Sitting next to me, I've got the Rami subframe. Now, this is the two pipe subframe. This subframe is what is shipped with a Rami by default. So if you order a Rami flail mower 120, uh, brush cutter 120, lawnmower 120, snowblower 120, doesn't matter. This is the subframe that comes with it. There is an optional one pipe subframe for the snowblowers. And um, we covered that a little bit earlier. I wanted to talk about mounting them in general. So if you look at this subframe, this is the end that would attach to the Rami, and this is the end that'll attach to your ATV or your UTV. So if you've got a snowplow mount bracket currently on your ATV or your UTV, and it's a center mount bracket that has two pinholes in it, the Rami will work. You can see here, I've got these two pins. I'll pull those out. And now we've got these ears that slide. So it's adjustable to fit whatever snowplow mount bracket that you have. And you can take these out and you can reverse them. So if they need to go, you know, if the ears need to be closer together, you can do that. What I, what I tend to tell people to do is, if you've already got the mount bracket on your ATV for a snowplow, then you're good to go. But if you don't have one, then you wanna get one. Um, we get it most of ours from KFI, and I've got a universal plow mount bracket right here from KFI. So I'm gonna show you basically what you need on the underside of your ATV in order to use the Rami. Now this is not included with the Rami package, but the subframe push tube assembly is. So this would mount on the underside of your ATV. There's a whole bunch more hardware that, that this sandwich mounts to, but just for this purpose, I wanted to show you what this looks like. So basically what you'll do is this will be on your ATV. You've got your subframe here. And what I do is I'll, I'll tighten these up just enough so they're so they're snug so that you can still slide these but they're not going diagonal and all over the place but basically you'll put this on the atv and then you'll go under the atv with your with your subframe here and let's pretend that this is on the atv we'll flip that pin we'll put this pin in right and now your basic mount setup is done this will be resting, the front end of this will be resting on the ground. And at that point, then you can make sure that these are square and you can tighten them down. And then after these are tight, whenever you want to take the Rami on and off, it's easy. You just have to remove these two pins. And once you do that, 
the subframe will fall. Now one of the important things to do is to put the subframe onto your ATV or UTV first because you've got the five holes up here on the subframe and you've got a multitude of holes on the Rami itself. So what you want to do is have your Rami sitting on level surface, your ATV on level surface, have this already attached to your ATV and roll your ATV up to that snowblower or whatever you're going to be attaching and then you'll see what set of holes make the most sense to bolt to. And then that way when you're you know, taking this back off of your ATV or your UTV, you don't, you're not having any, any uh, downward or upward pressure fighting you. The other thing on this subframe is that it's adjustable telescopically too. So if I take these two bolts out, there's multiple sets of holes in the outer part of the subframe, as you can see, and there's multiple sets of holes in the inner part of the subframe. So this whole assembly will slide and you'll slide this so that there's enough room for the implement to lift up without hitting your ATV. Your winch will hook onto one of these and pull this up. And once you have a good spot determined there, then you'll put these back in. Let's say that we want to use this set. So you'll put your bolts and your nuts back through there and then you'll tighten those up. And now your Rami will be ready for use. And the nice part is with this design, once you have the initial setup done, like I was showing, just removing the pins and unhooking the winch is all you have to do. So you want to use the ATV for something other than snow blowing, brush cutting, or lawn mowing. You can easily remove the Rami in less than five minutes, go do those other chores, and then hook the Rami back up in less than five minutes. And that's about the extent of showing how the subframe setup and push tubes is and how the mount bracket, what mount bracket you would need. Now, if, you, if your ATV already has posts on it, uh, then you can potentially use the lock hook set with this as well. All right, so last couple of things. Let's talk about parts and warranty. Yeah, so the Rami products all have a two-year warranty on them, and the engine warranty is, I'll, I'll, stay on, I'll stay on the Rami subject first. So outdoor power equipment industry is, is, is different because um, if you buy, let's say, a Husqvarna riding tractor that has a Briggs, Kohler, or Kawasaki engine in it. Yeah. That warranty is taken care, the Husqvarna warranty is taken care of at the dealer that sold Husqvarna, but the engine warranty is taken care of at whoever services that engine. Oh. So, <laughs> so this is unique in, in the fact that basically if something goes wrong on the Rami side of it, that's yeah. two-year warranty, we yeah. handle that. Okay. We send out the spare parts, help the customer with re replacing the part. If it's something they're not comfortable with, then we'll work with a local service center. Okay. I will say that in the six years of doing that, we've only had to do the service center route one time. Oh, wow. So wow. Um, otherwise, they're, they're very easy to work on, much like the firewood processors we sell too. It's, okay. it's, it's very simple design. Um, and and, and it really, like I said, we've had to do that one time. Yeah. Now, the, the Honda engine and the Briggs engine, that warranty would be taken care of at any Briggs and Stratton service center or Honda service center. So okay. that's kind of nice too, because let's say that something goes wrong with this Honda engine, you would take it to your Honda, whoever sells Honda, whoever sells the services near you, yep. and then it would go into their shop. And since this is an approved, it's an approved application for the Honda, then Honda honors the warranty, right? Okay. The one thing they don't cover, which is typical in, in the ultra power equipment industry, is fuel related problems, right? So yep. Briggs and Honda is the same way, that way that if you put gas in this thing in 2019 and you don't use it till 2022 and the carburetor is junk, yeah. <laughs> that's not going to be that's not going to be a warranty right, item. Right. So, and, and we're very clear about that up front with customers too. These have, all of these have fuel shutoffs on them. So use the fuel shutoff, run the thing out of gas, yep. you know, before you store it. Um, at the very minimum, if you don't think you're going to be using it for a long time, you know, turn the, turn the gas off and let it starve for fuel and shut itself off that okay. way. Um, that, that is always a, a good recommendation. Okay. You know what, Bob, since we got it here. Yeah. And Let's you know about. more about this than pretty much anybody else. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the Ultratech. Yeah, so this is the earth moving trailer. Um, it works for moving firewood, but dumping the firewood is not as easy <laughs> because it's got the tipping door on it. But yeah. um, sometimes people ask, you know, what's the difference between the earth moving trailer and the regular tandem axle trailer? Yep. And that is that the axles are pretty far back on the earth mover. Okay. And we've got a, a steeper tipping angle. So when you uh, put dirt in this thing or sand or, well, earth. Sure. Um, you, you want to load it more towards the back first because it'll be easier to tip up. Okay. And uh, with that tipping door, you know, the door opens and you can spread out your, your, uh, your earth, yeah. whatever. Yeah. This has got a solid frame on the bottom of it too, 
where the where the tandem axle does not. So oh, um, okay. on the side of the um, on the side of the Earth Mover too, you got a strap for putting a shovel yep. or another Earth moving tool there that you could put there. Yep. Okay. This has got the tandem pivoting axles on it, the walking axle you might call it. Yeah. So when you're going over you know uneven terrain, it 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 still stays pretty level, and you've got the swiveling hitch coupler on these too. Yeah. So you know if the if if either the ATV or the trailer tips over. The other one shouldn't. And all the trailers, there's there's two different tandem axles, and there's yes. the single axle. Yep. And there's um, that fancy. Yeah. Then there's oh. the big boy, the, the fully hydraulic yeah, one. Yeah. That yeah. Is basically configured the same as this, uh, but it's got hydraulic. It's got its own hydraulic power pack on it, cylinders, battery, everything. It's okay. a whole enclosed system as itself with a remote control, so you can be on your ATV or UTV pressing a button and dumping dirt. <laughs> you know, that that's a pretty cool rig. Heck yeah. Uh, and they're all going to be uh, galvanized, right? Yep, they're all galvanized steel. Uh, they hold up pretty well. We didn't, we weren't slamming the firewood into this, but we've done that at trade shows before to show. You know, you'll get some dings in it, but they don't dent super easy. Yeah. Uh, they hold up to a lot of abuse, and they can hold like this trailer can hold 3,000 pounds. So can the other tandem axle. Oh, is and, that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, and they've done a bunch of videos there to prove it too. And um, these are using you know hub bearings with, with grease in them, not just uh, bushings and you know stuff okay. like that. So. Yeah. Um, you're getting a good, you're getting a good, robust, well-built trailer for the money. Well, good. All righty, so that is a good look, a good overview. Thanks again, Bob, for coming out. Really appreciate you're welcome. that. And now, I did ask one question, and we just got the answer. Now, keep in mind, it's it's what time right yeah, now? Yeah. So, so right now it is 5:08 Eastern time. So it would be 12:08 midnight. And I just decided to send a message to Acousti, who is the export manager at Rami, and I said. Hey, what year did Rami start business? We're making a new video. And that was at 5 p.m. our time. He responded at 5.05 p.m. 2013. <laughs> That's pretty cool. 10 years Ten years next spring will be uh, their 10-year anniversary. So. Awesome, awesome. So about 10 years in business, and they're working around the clock, it sounds like. Yeah. All righty, folks, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Now, we are a Rami dealer. We sell and ship all over the country. And Bob is with Metz and Machines. Okay, he's going to be the importer for the U.S. and a distributor for the entire U.S. for Rami, for Yapa, for Ultratech. Anything else? More coming soon. More coming soon. Oh, interesting. All right. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Maybe another video in the pipeline, too. So if you're looking for something for your tractor or your UTV, ATV, we'd love to help you out. Go to GoodWorksTractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. If you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. A big thank you to Bob. Thank you, Courtney. Spending the entire day out here driving over from Wisconsin, committing way too much time to <laughs> really appreciate it so i can't say it enough and check out bob's channel as well mess and machines we'll put a link down there for you i want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon